Recall in the last video we discovered the factor theorem. The factor theorem tells us that if a binomial of the form x minus a is a factor of a polynomial p of x, then p of a must be zero, and vice versa. If p of a is zero, then x minus a must be a factor of p of x. We can use this to factor polynomials that are third degree or higher, which allows us to solve equations like this example. Solve p of x equals x cubed minus 8x squared plus 5x plus 14 equals zero. You may recognize this problem from the first video of this section. We now have the tools to solve it. We can follow these steps to apply the factor theorem to solve higher degree polynomial equations. Step one comes from the factor theorem. It tells us to guess values of a and evaluate p of a until we find a value of a that causes p of a to evaluate to zero, meaning that a is a root and therefore we found a factor of x minus a. Let's carry out step one on our example and try values of a. How about we start by guessing values that are easy to check, like one and negative one. Starting with one, we substitute one in for all the x's in our polynomial. One cubed is one, negative eight times one squared is negative eight, five times one is five, and the 14 stays as is. One minus eight plus five plus 14 is 12. Therefore, one is not a root of the polynomial and x minus one is not a factor. Let's now see if negative one is a root of our polynomial by substituting negative one in for all the x's. Negative one cubed is negative one. Negative eight times negative one squared is negative eight since negative one squared is positive one. Five times negative one is negative five and the 14 stays as is. Negative one minus eight minus five plus 14 is zero. Therefore, negative one is a root of the polynomial and x minus negative one, which is equal to x plus one, is a factor. Step one is now complete. On to step two, which is to divide p of x by the factor x minus a to give us a quotient q of x that is one degree lower than p of x. In other words, we know that p of x can be expressed as some quotient q of x times the factor we just found, x plus one. But what is q of x, the quotient expression? This is where we call on polynomial division. Because we've already done a few examples of both long division and synthetic division, I'm going to leave you to complete this division on your own. Please pause the video now and try to divide p of x, which is written near the top of the page as x cubed minus eight x squared plus five x plus 14 by the factor we just found, which is x plus one. Hopefully, completing the division gave you a quotient of x squared minus nine x plus 14 with a remainder of zero. Remember, since x plus one is a factor of p of x, the remainder from the division must be zero. You can use this as a checkpoint in the future. If you don't get a remainder of zero, then something went wrong either in step one, where you found the factor, or in your division. Note that the degree of q of x is two, one less than the degree of the original function, which was of degree three. On to step three, which is to repeat steps one and two until q of x is quadratic, or of degree two. In this case, q of x is quadratic already. So we just rewrite the original cubic as the product of q of x and the factor we found in step one. However, if our original function had been degree four or higher, we would need to apply steps one and two to the q of x expression we just found. You'll see an example of this in a later video. Finally, step four is to factor the quadratic. I'll let you try this on your own, and then I'll show you the steps so you can check your work. Feel free to pause the video and try it now. Here are the steps using the decomposition method. Take a second to check your work. Now that we have written p of x as the product of three linear factors, we can solve for the values of x that will set the polynomial to zero. If you need to, you can take each factor and set it equal to zero as we did in the video about finding polynomial roots with the quadratic. Or you can figure out the roots by inspection. We can see that the yellow linear factor of x plus one will be zero when x is negative one, the blue x minus two will be zero when x is two, and the blue x minus seven will be zero when x is seven. If we substitute any of these values in for x in our polynomial p of x, it will evaluate to zero. Feel free to test this yourself. With that, we have solved the equation. 
Whew, we made it. This all probably seems a little daunting right now, but with some practice, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. 